All right, here we go. 6.5, Le Chatelier's Principle, which deals with how a system at equilibrium will respond to stress. Now, obviously, stress for a system at equilibrium is very different than stress for us. So what is it? It's any change in temperature, concentration of the products or reactants, or pressure that's put on a system at equilibrium. That's what stress is. So when a stress is added to a system at equilibrium, the system will shift in order to relieve that stress. And the important part, it'll reach a new equilibrium. And a shift is an increase in the rate of either the forward or the reverse reaction. If the reaction shifts to the right towards the products, the rate of the forward reaction increases and it favors the products. It means the amounts or the concentrations of the products increase. And the opposite, if it shifts to the left towards the reactants, then the rate of the reverse reaction increases and it's going to favor the reactants, meaning the amounts or the concentrations of the reactions increases. So let's look a little bit about each of these parts. All right, so for concentration, well, the first thing we have to do is memorize. Add away. A, A, they go together. Add away. It's going to be an important phrase we're going to have to memorize. Here's what it means. All right, when you add a stress to a reaction at equilibrium, add, it shifts away, away to release the stress, to relieve the stress. All right, so when we add more of a reactant or a product, it's going to shift. So let's take a look at that. So here's a reaction. All right. 4NH3 ammonia, I'm sorry about that, plus 5O2 oxygen. It's going to give us 4NO plus 6H2O plus heat. So let's think here. What will happen if we add more H2O? So let's say we add more H2O to this reaction. Well, add away. That's going to shift the reaction to the left. And it's going to favor the reactant. So that means the amounts of reactants will increase. The amounts of the other products will decrease. So if we add water to this reaction at equilibrium, it's going to increase the amounts of ammonia and oxygen. Okay, It's going to decrease the amounts of nitrous oxide and heat. What happens if we add oxygen? Well, now that will shift the reaction to the right. It will increase NO, it'll increase H2O, and it'll increase the amount of heat. It would decrease the amount of ammonia. If we added an O, what's going to happen? Add away. It'll shift to the left. Same as before, it'll increase the things on the left, and it'll decrease the other things on the right. Temperature. Adding or removing heat. So we'll go back to that same reaction. What would happen if we raise the temperature? Now, raising the temperature and adding heat are effectively the same. And the same thing applies. Add away. Okay, So if we raise the temperature, it's going to shift away from the side with the heat on it. So in the case of an exothermic reaction, if we raise the temperature, it's going to increase our reactants. What's going to happen now if we lower the temperature or remove heat? Well, if it's add away, then when we subtract, it's going to move towards, just the opposite. So if we lower the temperature, our products will increase, while our reactants will decrease. Well, what about pressure? 
Now, a common question I've asked a few times in class is, does pressure affect solids? Or does pressure affect liquids? All right, if you said no, you're correct. Pressure affects gases only. All right, so what's going to happen if we increase or decrease pressure? Well, add away still applies. But the reaction shifts away from the side with the most moles of gas. Now let's look here. Right? CO2 gas in equilibrium with CO2 aqueous. What's going to happen if we increase pressure? Well, which side has the most moles of gas? Well, only the left, because the right here has aqueous, not gas. So if we increase the pressure, it's going to shift away from the side with the most moles of gas, and our CO2 aqueous will increase. Which kind of makes sense. If we increase the pressure of carbon dioxide and water, we're going to push more of the carbon dioxide into the water. What happens if we decrease the pressure? Well, you've done this many times in your life. Any time you've loosened the cap on a soda bottle, you've decreased the pressure on the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the water in the soda bottle. And what happens? Decrease the pressure. Now it's going to shift towards the side with more gas. And the CO2 pss, is released. All right, question time. Right. Three multiple choice questions. Shouldn't be too bad. Read them, figure out the answers, and hopefully you'll get called on these, called on for these in school because these are always nice. Multiple choice. All right, that brings to the end. See you guys in school.